Welcome to the Rebel Rebel. I'm your host, Michael Dargy. The Rebel Rebel is a show dedicated to creative rebels and entrepreneurs all over the world. It's a it's a love letter to those people who think audaciously and act courageously in service of making the world a better and more interesting place. I believe you have everything you need in your world right now to, you know, grow a very cool business. Right? Did you, you sort of anti-marketed your way into into Google. I anti-marketed my way to Google, yes. <laughs> becoming more irrelevant to my business, right? Everything cannot depend only on me. In this episode, you'll meet entrepreneur and advocate of anti-marketing marketing, marketing, Tiago Faria. Tiago landed his dream job at Google only to discover years later that it wasn't his dream. Tiago decided to follow his dream and made the big move back from corporate safety to entrepreneurship. Welcome to The Rebel Rebel with special guest Tiago Faria. Uh, Tiago, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's a true pleasure, honor. Um, and we're, I'm sure we're going to have a lot of fun here. So thank you so much for the opportunity. Mm, thank you. Uh, yeah, I can't wait. So, uh, Tiago, uh, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm, maybe I'll get this wrong, but are you in Lisbon? Uh, I was born and raised in Lisbon, uh, but, uh, okay. and then I lived abroad and I came, uh, I came back and I bought a house 20 minutes away from Lisbon, but okay. in a more r- rural, I don't know if you say it like rural yeah. area right? <laughs> <laughs> with horses, with some cows around. But still 20 minutes away from civilization. So it's the best combination for, for us. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. So, uh, Tiago, if you could catch us up with what you're doing right now, what is what is a, a day in the life of Tiago Faria look like? Yes. So right now I am a business mentor uh, for people that work in the, this kind of help industry, you know, the coaches, mentors, consultants, service providers that are actually helping people get some right. sort of results, right? and that are focused on generating profound transformations for those people. And so they uh, uh, are charging or should be charging high tickets for their own services, programs, etc. cetera. Um, and uh, I focus on helping those that are already helping clients, are already having some success, but still didn't find a way to, you know, stabilize, uh, so find some, some sustainable system, framework, et cetera, to not start every month from zero, you know, to not depend too much on... Um, like the passive word of mouth, you know, many, many people that I talk to depend on passive word of mouth so that you don't you never know when it dries out, you know? So yeah, I'm focusing on having those people and I love the anti-marketing approach, which is uh, something I told you about yeah. that, that is basically using, I believe you have everything you need in your world right now to, you know, grow a very cool business. And maybe we can talk about it a bit, a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I, I definitely want to, I want to talk about the anti-marketing approach. I think that's outstanding. I'm <laughs> really curious about professionally how you got to be doing what you're doing. Like, uh, and I will get back, we'll go further back in time, uh, to discover what is it about Tiago that made you want to do this, uh, when you grew up, I, I'm assuming you're a grown up. I don't know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I don't think I'm going to going to be it. Fully grown up, and thank God, yeah, yeah right <laughs> I'll on. Keep this 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 child uh, mode of mine active, nice. um, but yeah, not going too far back. I don't know how far back you want me to go now. Yeah, well, like I, I'm childhood. curious about professionally, like what what led you ah, here? Professionally, yes. Yeah. So so yeah, um, it started mostly when I went to uh, Manchester, United Kingdom, to my master's degree. I was choosing something random about marketing, strategic consumer marketing, uh, but then uh, my tutor. Uh, which was helping me prepare my final thesis. He told us in a class, uh, you guys should look at digital marketing is the future. And it was 73 year old man, right? <laughs> and this is back in 2008. And it was, we were like, oh my God, maybe I should change my final thesis too. So I, I twisted it into uh, talking about Google and uh, search engine marketing influence in the UK consumers. Mm. Um, yeah, and it started there, my adventure here in this digital world. Um, and then I always had this on the back of my mind, Google, oh, the holy grail of, huh. of the dig- digital world. Uh, so I came back to Portugal, worked as a, a service provider for a while and then some internships and then, but I always wanted to go to Google. So I, okay, I have to do something about it. Who knows who that works there already in the Google headquarters <laughs> in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, I f- figured out someone that knew someone that worked, whose boyfriends, girlfriends worked there or something like that. Um, and I used my rebel skills, my, I had yeah, some design nice. skills, artistic skill, <laughs> uh-huh. to create a very cool CV uh, of my own, as if it were a Google search for my name. And the yeah. search results were the, my experience, my uh, background, academic background, 
and somehow caught the attention of the recruiter there. Thank God. Oh, nice. <laughs> and there I went um, in 2011. Yeah, 2011 to to Dublin, Ireland. Uh, oh. to very cold, rainy, um, yeah. and dark Dublin. But uh, yeah, it was eight incredible years. Uh, of course, I had a chance to work with some of the biggest companies in Europe, in the Middle East. I had a lot of fun. Uh, but at some point, I started uh, feeling this rebel side of mine again yeah. to come up. Uh, started getting a bit sick of this corporate environment, you know, the boss nagging my nerves every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, and also Facebook ads were growing like crazy at the time. I was like, oh, I'm missing out on something here. I was o- only focused on Google ads and um, I felt a bit limited right. creatively as well. Huh. And at some point, I... In the last three years, I, I, I understood I was psychologically un- unemployable. And I, 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 cannot, I cannot find any, any, <laughs> any solution inside of this. I, I even tried to move around to different offices or to different roles, but I was never motivated for the interviews. And I was like, everything was, it didn't go well, of course. And I even thought, hey, maybe it changed to a different company in the same area. But nah. yeah. So yeah, ah. it took me a while <laughs> to figure out what I wanted to, to do. But um but at some point, a friend of mine actually gave me a book that you, of course, might know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Yeah. And most people read it and then suddenly, right? <laughs> <laughs> what am I doing? Yeah. Um, and yeah, then I slowly started, you know, okay, this is what I want to do. I want to do my own thing, right? Uh, recreate my own rebel path. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it started started there. The little bug started. I don't know, I don't know if you want me to develop more how... I went after that. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fa- here's, here's, here's my takeaway so far yes. is that, um, the, <laughs> you had, you had a goal to work at the biggest search engine on the planet and you've got there. Um, and it's, it's really interesting to me that you got there through relationships, yeah. which I think is great. And then some really cool, um, you know, thinking outside the box, showing that you knew the product in a way that uh, maybe other people didn't. So you stood out. I think that's really cool. Uh, what's interesting to me is that, you know, after and again, paraphrasing, after about five years, it stopped becoming all that in a bag of chips, uh, to, to use a, a UK phrase. And um you know, you started moving around trying to figure out why it was uncomfortable to you. And then you pop out into the world of Tiago, which I assume is sort of the trajectory of how you got to where you are today. Yes. yes exactly. That was what I got and, uh, from that conversation. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And uh, so after that, I, I um, yeah, I started to play around with some, uh, you know, whatever every new entrepreneur starts doing, like all the bright, shiny objects, right? I do mm-hmm. some drop shipping here and you know, some little funnel here and <laughs> uh, started playing around um, and the, but then also I, I I had the idea of creating my own blog in uh, in October 2018 mm-hmm. I knew already I was going to quit uh, Google at some point I was already preparing for my exit uh, yeah. I was investing here in Portugal in some real estate and making sure I would have some clients here already to to start not out of, not of, from zero right <laughs> yeah um, so yeah and then I thank God my wife, uh, you know, agreed on it. And uh, even though I thought, oh my gosh, she's going to kill me because this is it's Google, <laughs> right? Everyone thinks that you are in yeah. on top, you know, it's like, you should be thankful for being there, right? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, she understood that uh, it wasn't for me. I wanted to follow my own path and uh, it was amazing. Did you learn any, uh, is there any, you probably can't say this, but I'm going to ask anyways, did you learn any Google tips for, you know, uh, getting to, to you know, figuring out their algorithm or to you know buying ads, like what, what do you know that we could use? No, no nothing, nothing uh, fantastic. Uh, mostly, we had the tools to to see you know all right. the searches in the world and all the all the data that people want to find out. That was so you still got to work for management. it. Yeah, exactly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn it. <laughs> yeah, there's not nothing uh, like. That would be a magic button, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and here I thought Google, if, if any company had a magic button, it would have been Google. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I even thought I, it didn't exist. Like Google, when I when I was first applying for it, I was, but Google is just like a blank page with a, you know, a box, yeah. search box. How can you be a real company? Oh, <laughs> but then yeah. I discovered it's a massive, massive corporation. Um, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, sorry. The tangent there. And the, 
Uh, so I was preparing to come back to Portugal. And then, I, yeah, in 2019, came back to Portugal to work for, um, I worked with some, some of the clients here, but, but I was, uh, I was bringing overly complicated strategies from there, like Google ads, funnels, and all those things mm. to, to my own business and to my client's business. So I was complicating my life and, uh, and my clients. So for, for three years, I, I was also then like all of us, most of us at the beginning, we fall for the traps of the internet gurus, right? They tell us to do right. all those crazy things. You're one funnel away. And then, um, it was only, uh, yeah. So three years, I was hitting against a brick wall and it was only when I decided, okay, I have to to work with someone that already did this path and show me the way and just keep me accountable. So I decided to work with a mentor. His name was Terry Dean. He's from the US. He's uh, making money online since 2006 or something. 1996, oh, wow. sorry. 1996 is a dinosaur in this thing. Um, and yeah, <laughs> then we <laughs> made, um, made my vision, created my vision, created my plan, focused on exactly who I wanted to help, what I, what I told you about today, who I'm helping. Yeah. Um, and started simplifying my approach as much as possible going back to the basics of marketing and timeless business strategies and inspired by Mr. J. Abraham, this book, getting everything you can out of all you've got. Oh, I focused right on, this, on all you've got. Oh, what do I have around me? Right. And that's oh, why, how I started shaping this anti-marketing approach, uh, which, which tells you to use everything you've got and uh, get the best you can out of it. Okay, so this seems like a perfect segue. We are going to time travel backwards again further later, but I want to talk about this anti-marketing thing. Yeah, so it's um, basically, again, like, like as I said, just using, um, focusing on your current existing relationships rather than thinking of reaching out to new relationships and people don't, that don't know you, uh, like using ads, using cold email, et, et right. cetera. That's, that's a long and a complex way. Uh, if you really want to, you know, start things uh, kicking off, if yes, <laughs> well, you, I mean, you did this naturally when you went to Ireland. Oh right? uh, yeah, like, exactly. You, like you <laughs> established naturally established relationships, right? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Did, that's you true, you that's sort true. of anti-marketed your way into <laughs> into Google. I anti-marketed my way to Google. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so using my current, that's a perfect uh perfect title or something yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's that's very true uh, thank god that you extracted that from me that, that, thank you for that um <laughs> yeah so if you're looking to have to achieve something now just focus on established relationships so think who are they who you're you have a customer list or clients people you've worked with before or leads you have contacts you have friends family LinkedIn connections, right? People that you've yeah. interacted in the past, maybe not too active now, but you still have a relationship. And your audience, we all, most of us have, you know, followers on social media, et cetera, or yeah. email lists. Um, and these people that we have around us, they might ne not necessarily be the ones who give us the money, but they can be also who help us get the money, uh, right. which I will, I, I can tell you a bit. It's basically using referrals, <laughs> yeah. which is uh, something that Mr. J focuses so much then. um <laughs> i'm and totally yeah, gonna put that on the on the website yeah. where people can buy it yes yeah, yeah. definitely it's, it's helped me a lot this book um and yeah and the first thing to ask out of your context is okay do i have something that my target audience actually uh, needs right does does my current program service offer actually answer to a desperate problem that they might have now and they they need to solve it now urgently <laughs> if not that's maybe where should we should start right we should Okay, let's talk to our previous clients or previous leads, interview them and yeah. ask them questions like, hey, what, what do you need? What, what's your main obstacles, your main frustrations, your main goals? Uh, we want yeah. to extract that emotional language that we can uh, later reuse to communicate right. with them, right? It's like being a copywriter for, for free, <laughs> <laughs> having magical <laughs> skills for, for nothing. Yeah. Um, so you, you interview them, you collect all that magical data to see, okay, what do they need right now? What are they suffering with? What do they actually want to achieve? So I create an offer around that. And then you can go back to them, to those same people that you just talked to and say, hey, um, I created this amazing program that solves the problem you told me you have. Well, what do you think about it? You know, what's your opinion? And just by the, that small action, you can start already having your first clients, right? Because you know, you're creating something amazing that they want to buy. Yeah. So it's natural that many of them would be interested, right? And also, if, if, if they don't want to buy, you can also ask, hey, do you know anyone who'd be interested in this kind of service, you know? And right. only with this small action of interviewing people, you can start reaching out to a bigger network of, you know, 
referrals, networks, where you never know how many people you can reach if you just simply yeah. start asking proactively. Um, so yeah, those are for the people to create an offer using, you know, your own network, right? And, right. and then the second question to ask is, okay, do my current relationships need my new offer? If the answer is yes, then, okay, let's just ask them if they want it, right? Like I said, sure. ask the people you interviewed. Uh, yeah. You can also leverage your social media to, um, to create those kind of um, hand-raising posts, you know, like, like those posts where you just uh, uh, two-step, like hand-raising posts. Where you, uh, look, I created this video that uh, shows you how to achieve this specific goal. You want the link? You know, send me a DM yeah. or a comment below or whatever. <laughs> and yeah. then you just create excuses for to interact with those people. You know, they can start talking to them. And, ah, what's your problem? Or, you know, actually, I have a, this solution for your problem. You want to help with it? Uh, you can you can start asking the people that actually need your offer around around your current network. And if the answer is no, that they, they don't need your offer, then can you make yeah. something for them that they need, which is again the referral program. You always have something to offer to people, either they want it or not, or need it or not. Um, so yeah, the very basic business and marketing yeah. um, strategies, but that no more. It's so easy to do, but it's too simple that most people don't do it, right? <laughs> yeah, isn't that funny? Like we try to, we tend to overcomplicate things so much, and again, fall victim to the gurus, as you mentioned, and you know what we what we should be doing, or we have mm -hmm. to do this, or you have to do this, when in fact it's you know going back to actually you know having a conversation and talking to people. It's, I like that. It's nice. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> people around you, and we o overestimate uh, the the power of network connections, right? Every Everybody needs either to solve the problem that you can solve or they, everybody needs money, right? At yeah. Some more than others, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Everybody loves to support the people they care about. You know, connections go much further than we, that we can ever possibly imagine. And you never know who knows who, like I did with Google, right? Yeah. <laughs> and oh, can yeah. market my way off to Google. <laughs> uh, so simply, why, why not having a, a, a proactive referral program and where you say, hey, I, I can give you a commission of, I don't know, 20% of something. If you send me a client, that becomes you know, that buys my program, and yeah. you create a habit of systematically doing it, not just once once off. Yeah. Actually, create a system like track everything. Create a Google Sheet. Okay, how many people did I reach out this month? How many people did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you do it systematically, you know magic can start happening. It's it's incredible oh. how you can do it with only what you have. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Chago, take me back in time. Take me back to. I don't know, a, a, a childhood memory or a teenage memory, something that stands out to you as sort of, you knew you were going to do something different um, or you knew you were maybe wired a little differently than other people. <laughs> yeah. Yes, 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 definitely. I, um, it was actually from my childhood, what I, what stands out is my, I, I really wanted to be a cinematographer like or a movie director or, or something. Uh, wow. So yeah, I, I remember doing those stop motion videos with my Playmobil or Legos or <laughs> <laughs> toys. Right yeah. uh, also doing movies with my 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 sister, my brother, with friends even. I, so I was always around this this creative mode of uh, telling stories and then and even showcasing them to my family. I would uh, I would okay, there's a session tonight. Uh, I'll pay ticket. It was like uh, I know. One dollar, <laughs> and I would love to look at people and see their reaction and see, okay, I'm I'm creating some kind of reaction to people, some generating some emotions, you know, or um, and yes, I always loved that. I I, I wanted also to 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 reach uh, at some point. I wanted to go to the uh, conservatory of cinema. I don't know if you would have the same terminology there. I'd like to to become a, a movie uh, creator, a real director, yeah. or something. But here in Portugal, I figured out it was the, it's a very elitist world very close-minded and uh i didn't get in uh, so i was completely disappointed by it yeah um and yeah so then i started slowly moving to this area of okay what's the next cool thing i could go to tv i did some internships but also didn't like that world somehow i don't know again I fell oh, okay. out of love from it uh advertising marketing and then yeah I got into this path but yeah it was definitely the the creative part side of, of movie making and uh, also doing uh, cartoons, yeah, actual cartoons, inventing my own characters, my own. Uh, what? Yes, <laughs> do you, do you, I remember I had draw? a, I had a cactus man. No, I actually don't know anymore. But I invented oh, a hero, me. superhero versus cactus man. I would just throw spikes at, at people. And all that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it was it's a shame I, I should i should continue drawing but i kind of you know lost that that side of mine and then i maybe move now to this marketing world the, the maybe uh, provoking emotions on people in different ways right through my my, my communication skills uh, the copywriting and Mm-hmm. Uh, and also the, the delivering results, which which we are in a results industry, this this kind of help industry. So helping people and they, making them really realize, okay, I achieved something, I'm on the right path, etc. So yeah, I think those emotions are what kept me connected uh, in the, both areas. Very cool. What's the what's sort of next for you? Like, do you have a, a plan for you know next year, next five years, next ten years? I mean, I know that's so far away, and the world is changing so fast, but do you have a trajectory that you're following or are you just status quo right now? Like just doing what you're doing? Yeah, I've been status quo for a long time. But mm-hmm. but lately I've been thinking more uh, about the the fact that being a solopreneur, we just, you know, help here and there. It's it's dangerous, man. Imagine if I become sick or and for three months or six months, I have to go for a leave or I have a problem in my family or something. The business yeah. will just, you know, yeah. and so, so I'm I'm very thinking very actively about that now. Uh, and I want to grow faster this year so that I can reach a stage where I can, okay, I can start becoming more irrelevant <laughs> to my business, right? <laughs> Everything cannot depend only on me. Right. Um, so yeah, the, the plan for, for this year and next year will be to, okay, uh, let's reach a, a cool stage where I can start, you know, investing on people, investing on uh, uh, systems, on ads, you know, I can start playing finally with, with that. Um, the, the Tiago Ferreira Fe- uh, <laughs> method. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Faria. Um, oh, I, I said Faria, didn't I? Yeah, Tiago Faria method. Yeah, I think that'd be great. <laughs> I think you'd I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd sign it. up. Yeah, you'd sign up. <laughs> I'd sign up. But yeah, I think that that's on my mind too. You know, also to have more time for my family. Uh, my daughter is three years, uh, three years and a half. So I want to oh. you know, see her grow, see her go to everything that she does yeah. at school. Uh, well, I want to travel the world. I always love to travel. My my parents always had this bug. They they would go to the US actually every summer and uh, would take us sometimes, sometimes not. But I always had this bug of you know discovering the world, going out, and oh yeah, that's what I want to do. have time for myself, for my family, and have a very cool business that actually creates results for people. That is like keeps me super happy. But that runs by itself, right? I, I, it doesn't depend completely on me, and it cannot be. It's not a business if it if it's like that. It's it's another job yeah. you create. <laughs> Ah, uh, so true. Yeah, yeah, if it's, yes, yes. It's just a joke. It's scary sometimes to yeah. think about it, and most of us don't think about it. Like we, we think you're Superman. We, ah, I'll yeah, just, I can do everything my own forever. And <laughs> but it's not. yeah, it's so true. Oh, that that hits a little close to home. <laughs> That's Hello. awesome. Uh, hey, what's your where's your favorite place to travel? Where have you been so far that stands out as like, oh, I love that place. Uh, yes, um, I really love to go to Asia, Asia, the Asian countries. Um, so, something that stands out was the in Cambodia. There's a town, a town, and a, a temple is called Angkor Wat. Angkor Wat, and um, it's like magical world. It looks like something taken from a Tomb Raider movie, you know, with wow. tree roots coming out and g- going together with the monuments. And and I, I watched the sunrise there. It was really a magical moment. So. Um, yeah, all those countries, Cambodia, uh, Malaysia is, is beautiful. Uh, I really love the, the vibe, the vibe of the people, the, the food and everything is so much more, you know, calm, peaceful. Um, mm. But um, yeah, I think most, most, most on, on that area. And of course, the US. I, I really want to explore all the 50 states <laughs> and Canada. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that's, the North that's America. Right. What's, your, what's your favorite state that you've been to? Or actually, let me ask you this. Where, where's the place that you really want to go in the States? That's like on the top of the United States bucket list. Yes, uh, uh, I think is the, the Texas area, you know, that middle Southern part. It's, mm-hmm. It fascinates me somehow. Because my, maybe because all, of, of all the TV shows that we watch here, <laughs> like, you know, oh, everything's sure. American, all the yeah. movies, um, the Texas, the, um, and also very curious about uh, New Orleans. Um, which, which state is it? Is, uh, Louisiana. Louisiana, exactly. In the New Louisiana. So those two states are interesting. And the, my favorite was so far uh, was in, I was doing the the, the, um, the New York around all those s- small little states around Vermont, Maine. I really love that area. Yeah, it was it was beautiful. Oh. We uh, we really should repeat that. Uh, we rented one of those huge 
dodge <laughs> trucks just just because we could <laughs> with a huge uh how do you call it the the, the backside which is open open uh oh open yeah trunk, the pickup, how do you call truck? It? pickup truck yes exactly <laughs> just because <laughs> the, for the whole full experience oh uh, yeah that's great well i and I, i've never been to portugal i imagine it's like a lot of europe where the vehicles are very small and the roads are smaller yes 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 <laughs> Oh, although it's now it's became everything a bit more globalized. It's not as different as it was, was before. But yes, you could definitely notice a difference. Uh, but uh, you should come here, man. It's uh, becoming more and more popular in Lisbon. Well, lots of Americans coming here now. <laughs> and, and Canadians and ever, people looking, from all the world. What's the, what's the weather like uh, just in, in general? Like, is it, uh, do you know the latitude? Is it lat- um, latitude? Latitude. Latitude is latitude. up and down, like. I actually don't know, but I, all I know is that we have around 300, 300 days of sun. <laughs> what? Uh, most most of the months are you know very good weather here. It's, that, that's what I love. That's why I came back and I want don't want to leave. Okay. The colder months are just December, January, February, and then it starts you know warming up again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the food, man, the food here is so good. The, the fish, the the Mediterranean cuisine uh, that oh, we have, yeah. the the and the lifestyle is also very very relaxed. You know, people here. I worked in the UK and in, in, in Dublin uh, for a long time. It's just work, 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 hustle, hustle, hustle. Here, people are all like, yeah, it's going to be okay, man. Just have a glass of wine, go to the <laughs> beach. <laughs> okay. Even though people are poorer here, they, they, they're they still like, yeah, just enjoy life, man. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Well, it, uh, my partner, Jen, and I were looking for a, a place to go travel to. Yeah. And we were, we were thinking about, you know, Greece. We were thinking about, oh. you know. No, oh, no. <laughs> Portugal now is on the list. Uh, and it's closer about... to you. It's the westernmost point in right. Europe, so it's close to yeah Canada. Mm-hmm. Just a big pond you have to cross. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. We're yeah. I mean, we we love to travel. And uh, have you been to Europe uh, any any times? Or yeah, well, I've, I've been very little. I mean, I've been to Italy, um, Italy. in the UK. Yeah. Surprise! You didn't go to to Paris because that's the usually when I we see movies they they talk about ah Paris is like Europe is is Paris only you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like the, the place to go. I mean, I, I certainly there's a there's a time and a place for that. I, I would love to travel all throughout Europe, and it, I mean everything's so close together. Like yes. the province where we live, <clears throat> I'm going to get this wrong, but you'll know, under, understand where my head's coming from. Is I believe Alberta is almost the size of the United Kingdom. <laughs> like yeah. that's the size of Canada. This is tiny here, man. You can do Portugal from top to bottom in yeah. like six hours or something, five to six hours. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I think in Alberta, it would take you about 12 to 14 hours, maybe even more, maybe oh 18 goodness. hours. That's a big, like, and that's just, that's one province in Canada. Like, just, <laughs> Yeah. But Canada man. is massive. It's insane how big it is. It is huge. Yeah, I drove I drove a motorcycle across Canada. Well, across most of Canada from um the southern part. Just yeah, so I, we were just by Quebec um which is our sort of our French province and I drove all the way across to Calgary, so across four, so Ontario, um Manitoba, Saskatchewan and Alberta, so four provinces. And it took me 4 days to do, but 3 of those days were just getting across Ontario. Like, <laughs> and those three are, days would get you from Portugal to I don't know, very far, <laughs> maybe to I Russia. Know, right? <laughs> I know, yeah. And I was like, yeah. By the time, it, and those were ten to twelve hour days of riding. You know, wow. it was, uh, yeah. So anyway, I, you know, all that to say, yes, I would love to come to Portugal, and I'd please, I will be uh, happily. You're I'll happily be the okay the, the host and show you around yeah. and tell you where to go yeah. and make yeah, it, we'll have wine we have Mediterranean diet so we live forever. <laughs> so Eat good. the bacalhau here. The the codfish is the main the national uh-huh. dish. Okay, we have like hundreds of recipes just for that specific fish. <laughs> how 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 is it speaking English there? It's actually good. It's one of the advantages of of, of the Portuguese. Because we speak good good English because we don't actually dub the movies, the series, nothing. Oh, we just okay. we listen to the original language and we read the subtitles. So oh, we get familiar well. with the accent, with the, the wordings. While the Spanish, the French, the German, the Italians, they 
with everything in their local language. So they sure that's why they are terrible usually. Sorry, uh, <laughs> anyone, anyone listening from that country, <laughs> but their English is a bit you know, a very strong accent. You know, it's, yeah. sometimes it's difficult. But but yeah, that's one of the advantages here. All right. Well, we'll try to learn some Portuguese before we come. <laughs> um what is it, what is uh so i mean you you've talked a little bit about sort of what's next and what's down the road for you um and you know getting your business to basically run on its own so you don't have to be necessarily a part of the day-to-day -day stuff which i think is brilliant um but where where's your next big adventure do you think like will you continue along the same stream that you're in right now or Will that in terms of business, I think, yes, I have to be quite clear. In terms of personal life, I think we're considering also moving, actually living in, the, in a different country. That, oh, okay. that will be my biggest adventure. Um, because, do, I mean, you know, we're still young. Do you know where? Still young. Yeah, uh, we love, as I told you, we love Asia. So we were thinking even some, something like Malaysia, um, some, some country like that where we, we love the culture, we love the food, we love the, how people live there and I don't know. It's it's just just um, so on top of our mind. Um, but yeah, other than that, no crazy plan. Just mm -hmm. just living life, being free, and enjoying familia, familia, family. Yeah, right on. What's your? Uh, I, I mean, you've got this epic bookshelf behind you, which is great. Um, <laughs> what? And you've shown me. Uh, well, you've shown me one of your books, but you've ta talked about a couple of them. What's your? What's your go-to beyond the one that you just showed? Like, what's the? What's on your bookshelf that you're you're always picking up and being like, oh yeah, I gotta remember that. Mm. That's a good uh, good question. Um, I usually go to. I don't know, I'll say this one because I, I love copywriting, uh, and, and this guy Eugene Schwartz, breakthrough yeah. advertising. This guy wrote this book in the twenties or the thirties, so it's the the it's origins of of everything that all the new gurus are saying. So it, it all came from here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has all the, the basic principles of human psychology of uh, how our mind works. And um, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's like a hundred euro book. It's like, you can, you don't find it everywhere. <laughs> it's very rare nowadays, but uh, I, I keep coming back here to, you know, that, you know, that, um, the how do, how do you call it the i forgot about the terminology but it's something the the, uh, the client awareness uh a kind of ratio where where people are like they start by not knowing they have a problem to being problem aware and then you know they look right, for a solution yeah. and so it, it teaches all those kind of things that we don't usually think about uh accurately um yeah i'll, I'll definitely I'll recommend this this book breakthrough advertising for who wants to become a better communicator a better yeah. advertiser, copywriter, etc. I find it I find it fascinating, like how cyclic things are. <laughs> that you know, the, the the new thing is not new. <laughs> Nothing is invented anymore, right? Yeah, like, yeah. When when did we stop inventing stuff and just start re repurposing? <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. a good question. Where in the the last hundred years uh, things kind of started yeah. being repurposed? And uh, yeah, that's a good good thought. Jago, what do you think is the next thing in the cycle in your world? Hmm. Like, wh what do you what do you think is coming up next that we should be aware of? Uh, I think everyone is talking now about AI, right? Um, yeah. But I have I have a specific uh, feeling about that. Um, it will. I don't believe that in the near future it will replace our at least in this world of business and uh, writing, uh, copywriting, or social media posts, et cetera, it won't reach a level where you can actually just simply copy paste it and make it work right. for you. I think it's an amazing tool for brainstorming, like having a, your own uh, research assistant that goes all over the web and <laughs> brings you yeah. all of the data, gives you ideas, but then you, will, you always will still have to put input your own creativity, your own story, your own personal touch. Otherwise, we all start yeah, sounding voice. the same or... Because AI reflects the the most common answers or the most popular answers, uh, and so sure. if we just keep using that, <laughs> oh well, yeah. everyone's gonna sound a bit similar, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, un unsurprising and uninteresting. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I don't know. That, that's gonna be a big big uh, evolution of of course on it, but I think yeah. it will be an evolution of our to our work to the way we we work. We're gonna be more. Um, productive more organized more structured more ideas yeah. gonna pop up more quickly right and we can just mix and match stuff and 
but I think it will, it will support our creativity, I think, not replace it, I believe. Are you, Sorry, are you didn't answer your question. Uh, but, no, it was uh, perfect. Yeah. It was lovely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. It was great. You're, um, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm the king of non sequiturs, so I, I like to bounce around a bit. You're, <laughs> are, are you by the coast? Or are you, like, what is your... Uh, not exactly by the coast. Uh, Lisbon is by the coast, yes. But I'm a bit more into the interior. I have the river here, at least. The Tagus River, the most popular river here. It goes... Oh, nice. Close. Yeah, I, I see it from here. And behind me is the forest. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, okay. So check this out. Tiago's walking through the forest along the river. Okay. <laughs> so just to picture yourself there, you're like trucking along and it's a, it's a beautiful day. The, you know, you're in one of the 300 days of sunshine <laughs> that you're famous for. And, uh, you know, maybe there's one little white fluffy cloud. Doesn't matter. But Tiago's sitting there thinking to himself, oh, if I could just tell the world this one thing. What would that one yeah. thing be that you would tell all of us? Yeah. Uh, I actually thought about some similar question before that I had in my mind uh, that helped, that uh, would have helped me so much in my childhood. My God, is, is, is to tell you that um, nobody cares, you know, because it's important <laughs> to think about this because I've been for so long in my childhood thinking about what other people think of me and mm. let that limit my own, you know, my actions, my, Everything I've done, it, I've suffered from so much anxieties and, um, and, and limiting my, my potential, basically, and personally and professionally, et cetera. Thank God I, I still was able to surpass it and just stretch myself, for example, to go to Google or yeah. uh, to jump to entrepreneurship. Some moments of, of superhero of me, but for the rest of the time, I was so limited by, by that. And uh, it's stupid. It's stupid. Why? Nobody cares. Everyone has their own problems, right? Yeah. Uh, why would you let imaginary problems? I think Mark Twain said this exactly that. Uh, my whole life, I had lots of troubles. Most of them never happened. You know, <laughs> it's, a, it's it's incredible how we limit our our, our stupid brain allows that, mm. and we should fight it, man. Wow. From childhood, my daughter, she, I'm gonna tell her that, dude. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> nobody cares. Yeah, except your except your family. But even yes, then, they only, true, exactly, they only exactly. care a certain amount, right? Like, a, you can only... Yeah. You should just do whatever you want, right? And <laughs> Chaos, <laughs> whatever it's you anarchy, Tiago. Like. Be a rebel, yeah. Be a rebel, right? right? That's exactly uh, what this podcast should teach people, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I hope so. What is your... Um, so there's these, there's these people out in the world, and uh, maybe they're your potential client, or maybe they're uh, people who are embarking on their own entrepreneurial journey. <laughs> or they're <clears throat> C-suite trying to figure things out because, you know, we don't always have the answers. What advice would you give them beyond people don't care? What, what's, what's the advice that you would give these rebels? In terms of business and yeah. yeah. And well, or whatever you think, whatever jumps to your mind where you're like, you know, I mean, I, I, th I thought the nobody cares is epic that's fantastic <laughs> yeah more Is, focused now on on the yeah on business side uh one thing that i i would say to most of us uh in business on corporate world etc is to, uh, to to actually talk to people to uh the, the interviewing thing part that i said uh, yeah. because us entrepreneurs we tend to stay in our mind like uh, i can create everything alone then people will buy it eventually and then, and then nobody buys it and <laughs> so uh, losing that uh that selfishness i don't know and actually interview people, ask questions, collect the words, and then use it to your own advantage, right? Instead of being stuck in your own brain behind your computer. Um, I was an introvert maybe because that's why I did it. <laughs> but um, yeah. I think it's, it's, it opens up so many doors when you start talking to people, networking, you know, this thing, the podcasting, you know, the be create your own podcast or go on a tour, a podcast tour. Um, yeah. yeah, talking to people really, really creates magic um most people are might know that but are you a curious guy yes yes I, i'm definitely a, a noticer a noticer and uh and it's a skill i also i will also want to teach my daughter <laughs> to become a noticer to, to not just passively live through life and just you know, right. consume things or numb yourself on youtube but actually think about what you're consuming like oh this person did this movie because of this and 
you know, oh, this, this message is being sent to me because they want me to, you know, instead of passively being a consumer, because one, one, you also be a more educated consumer. You will not just fall into any trap, buy things you don't yeah. need and stuff like that. And then, and then second, because you'll start being, becoming more of a creator, right? And uh, you start thinking, right. oh, how can I also contribute somehow uh, to, to the artistic world, to the business world, et cetera. So I think this noticer skill is, is super cool. And I learned from it, it from Mr. Kevin Hutto. Um, he's not here anymore with us, but uh, yeah, I think it's a super skill that um, I, I always had, had it in my mind. Yeah. Um, but I think now I just, I was able to finally, okay, phrase it, uh, structure it, <laughs> make yeah. it more palpable. Uh, well, is that something that you, do you help these people that you mentor, you know, uh, recognize? Uh, yes. Yes. Um, I, that I, 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 I help many of them becoming creators by that, start noticing things and actually uh, I love to tell people to do 90 day challenges of, of uh, whatever they need to, a new skill they need, need to acquire, like uh, becoming a video creator or a copywriter yeah. or whatever. It's, it's the best way for you to break your own beliefs and uh, just jump right in. Yeah, jump right in uh, using brute force, 90 days, <laughs> gain a skill, uh, no matter what, even if you're sick, if you're, if you're, <laughs> if you have holidays or whatever, yeah. uh, it's the fastest way to gain a super skill and, uh, um, in a fa compressed type of space of time and become a creator. It's like a, it's a life-changing skill. Actually, I did, I did this first on my blog. When I created my blog, I did 90 days, 90 articles on my blog, on my blog, became wow. a writer, basically <laughs> super comfortable in writing. Then I did yeah. another one on video for YouTube, which I extended for 120 days. That's wow. why nowadays I'm super comfortable on camera. Otherwise I wouldn't be here talking yeah. to you. <laughs> what, how did, what did you, what did you find the big learnings were in the, in that YouTube challenge? Yeah. So that, uh, I became a, uh, content partner and the YouTube starts, you know, okay, this guy is answering all the questions that people need in this area. Let's give him a bit more eyes. You know, uh, oh, okay. I grew my channel much, much faster in that path. Um, I gained a skill that I didn't have, right? My first video was horrible. The second video was terrible. <laughs> by, the, by the 30th, I found my own voice. You know, I was, I was oh, okay, dude, I'm talking to you. I'm going to help you right now. I know what you're going through. And this is a, the things I'm going to tell you about. So, and you only get there by, you know, brute force right. doing it consistently. Yeah, brute force, just getting in there. Yeah. Um, how long, uh, how long are the videos? Like I usually did uh, 10, 10, 15 minutes. Uh, okay. Yeah, it was not sure. I did it in 2020, 2021, maybe. Nice. Uh, and I was, I was, uh, because I wanted to to break this belief that I had that I, introvert, uh, hated present, public presentations. <laughs> yeah. And I knew videos was an, a super important skill for, for my business and for my future, et cetera. And, uh, yeah. What tools did you use just out of curiosity to I generate think, that kind of content? I, I just, uh, I, I removed all those perfectionist thoughts <laughs> that would nice. keep me from doing it. Right. Okay. And I just, yeah, just, uh, I didn't have this, uh, I had an older camera, a smaller microphone. I just did it, you know, published, forget about it. Yeah. Keep going, keep going, keep going. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's so great. <laughs> and then you can That's, think of yeah. buying things. And once you already have that skill acquired and you can start, okay, a good microphone, this one, you know, yeah. better camera. Actually, I need a better camera. Like. You have a good camera there, right? It's not bad. I'm looking at getting a new one, um, but this one's like a an the old DSLRs, watch. right? Well, no, there's there's one. Oh, shoot, I, what is the name <gasps> of this thing? That replicates the effect of the DSLR. <laughs> it's well, it's mirrorless. It's um, oh, what the, what the heck is it? Please, I'm just looking up on me. my toolbar here. I just resorted my toolbar, so now I don't know where anything is. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remind you afterwards. Oh, it's called Opal. Ah, uh, I've heard of that. Yeah. I'll, I'll OPAL, right? Yeah. OPAL. Yeah. Um, cause I'm a Mac guy and, but yeah, Opal looks like the, the way to go. Um, awesome. I'll put here. Uh, so actually I still have a PC, but I want to, yeah, I want to upgrade to, to a Mac yeah. finally. Yeah. I've been refusing the, for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Join the dark side. Uh, I still uh, have an Tiago. Android as well. Uh, Android. Oh, phone. really? <laughs> which so is a rare I, thing there in North America, right? Yeah. But I, so I was just talking with uh, some future guests that are coming on and they had this crazy Android phone with like cameras down the one, like it was just had cameras everywhere, but they, there's a thing where it records your screen. So 
as you are like you can actually go and show yes. oh, you yes. know what i'm saying like they were doing behind the scenes stuff and yes. you could actually see their the user interface of the camera they were using so you could it was really it's really cool android's got some game yeah yeah man you don't know what but i tried <laughs> i tr- i tried i tried an android for a month i tried so hard to love it and I hated it's hard it. to change i know i know yeah <laughs> apple's got me yeah <laughs> Yeah. okay what is uh <clears throat> i just want to add one more one more question um <laughs> what okay so uh-oh what's the what's the one thing i think you've already you've already said but you said a couple different things but what's the one thing that you want to tell your that you want to tell your daughter um that's key to it all I mean, you've given us a couple of these things already. Have we hit the gold mine there, or is there something else that she needs to know? Yeah, I, I really think that uh, the one that uh, just do whatever you want. Yeah, I think that's the, <laughs> follow, follow. Yeah, follow your intuition. Yeah, follow your intuition without thinking yeah. of other people's opinions. Uh, not even mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, listen oh. to me with a grain of salt. Uh, no. <laughs> that's a that's a big but, thing for a parent. Because I didn't do what my parents wanted me to do, right? Uh, I, and I, here I am. I'm, I'm okay, right? It is, everything's yeah. fine. <laughs> yeah, everything's I'm doing out. what I like, what I love, right? Yeah. As long as I don't get, uh, she doesn't get lost in. Ah, one, sorry, one thing about the, um, yeah. Damn it, I forgot. The, well, I, I have something so so important to tell, to tell her that I thought of it in the previous holidays um, for her to not take take too much importance on uh, ah not depending too much on external input right um like if if uh, if 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 someone something happens around me and uh, i get upset by it uh, i want to i want to become a better person because i, I still get affected by external factors yeah. i want to teach her through showing her that uh, nothing can affect me you know ex- nothing external i don't allow anything external to affect me uh, um, this would be some, something that is your choice, right? And, oh, okay. uh, and if you start depending less on external inputs, it's amazing for you, right? Because you can be happy on your own. You can choose to be happy. Um, and you don't need to, to resort to like uh, drugs or alcohol or numbing yourself on YouTube or, you know, it's, I think it's an awesome, a super skill that I have to keep. Thank you for reminding me. I have to work on it to show yeah. her <laughs> that uh, she doesn't depend on nothing external, right? She has right. what well, she needs to be happy internally, right? Oh, that's, that's, so, that's big. That's really absolutely. big. Absolutely. Absolutely. Tiago, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, you've been so generous with your time, and uh, just I've loved every moment of this. I love how you connect this, man. It's really a cool chat, fun, and yeah, you've tracked so many things I, I haven't thought of before <laughs> from, from me. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, amazing. I hope some people took something out of this, right? Out of this journey. Oh my God, I'm sure they will. I can't wait. I've been your host, Michael Dargy, and this has been the Rebel Rebel Podcast. It's a podcast for creative rebels and entrepreneurs all over the world. And hey, if you're a rebel or you know a rebel, why don't you head on over to the Rebel Rebel Podcast.com and fill out our guest request form? We'll get back to you within 24 hours and maybe we can share your story with the world. Don't forget to like, share, or subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcasts. And thanks so much for listening. Until next time.